Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video will be on neoplasia. So let's get started. Neoplasia. What is neoplasia? It's an uncontrolled abnormal growth of cells or tissues in the body. Neoplasms are of two types, benign and malignant. The benign neoplasms or the non-cancerous neoplasms usually grow slowly and don't spread. However, the malignant tumors or the cancerous neoplasms usually grow rapidly and invade other parts of the body. Carcinogenesis is a mechanism of induction of tumors. There are three types of carcinogenesis, physical, chemical and biological. Coming to physical carcinogenesis, the physical carcinogenesis can be caused by radiation like UV rays, ionizing radiation, X-rays, alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, etc. Other causes of physical carcinogenesis include mechanical factors like gallstones, burns, scars, surgical implants or foreign bodies. Few examples of physical carcinogenesis are melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma in which exposure of the cells to UV light from the sun causes formation of pyrimidine dimers in DNA that have the potential to lead to mutation and cancer. Other examples are cancers which are caused by ionizing radiation which directly affects DNA structure by inducing DNA breaks and generation of reactive oxygen species that oxidizes proteins and lipids and also induce several damages to the DNA. Few examples are leukemias except CLL, breast, thyroid, bladder, colon, liver, lung, esophageal cancers, ovarian and gastric cancers and multiple myeloma. Coming to chemical carcinogenesis. Chemical carcinogenesis is caused by agents known as chemical carcinogens. So what are these chemical carcinogens? Few examples I have enumerated in this table. For example, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons which causes skin, lung, gastric and liver cancer. Aromatic amine and azo dyes exposure to which can lead to liver and bladder cancer. Nicotine which can cause lung cancer, oral cancer or other forms of respiratory tract cancer. Halogenated compounds which can lead to kidney cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer. Exposure to arsenic which can cause skin, lung and liver cancer. Exposure to nitrosamine which can cause nasopharyngeal, esophageal, gastric and oral cancers. And consumption of alcohol which can cause oropharyngeal, laryngeal, esophageal, liver, colon and breast cancer. Well, these chemical carcinogens are of two types, direct acting and indirect acting carcinogens. The direct acting carcinogens ultimately are reactive towards the DNA from the outset, whereas the indirect carcinogens requires metabolic activation to become reactive towards DNA. Examples of direct acting carcinogens are alkyl or aryl epoxides, nitrosoureas, nitrosamides, sulfonates and sulfate esters. Examples of indirect acting carcinogens are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, aromatic amines, alkyl nitrosamine and aflatoxin B1. Mechanism of chemical carcinogenesis well, in chemical carcinogenesis, there are three stages. Initiation, promotion and progression. In initiation stage, there are genotoxic carcinogens which produce mutation in the cells. In stage of promotion, these cells can be stimulated to proliferate by tumor-promoting carcinogens to form clusters of initiated cells. This form lesion is predisposed to progression into a cancer by additional exposition to genotoxic and tumor promoting substances which accelerate the progression stage by increasing genomic instability and cellular proliferation rate to convert a preneoplastic lesion into cancer. So, initiation involves the production of a stable, heritable, mutational change in the target cell. Chemical carcinogens that function at the initiation stage are referred to as initiators or initiating agents. These initiating agents that function at this stage of the cancer process are genotoxic compounds. Examples of these carcinogenic initiators are alkylating agents like cyclophosphamide, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons like 
oxide found in smoked food, aromatic amines or azodyes used in food coloring, aflatoxins in moldy peanuts, and nitrosamines in pickled foods. So the steps of initiation involves direct acting carcinogens without any metabolic activation and indirectly acting carcinogens with metabolic activation causes mutational change in the target cell well, and then there is formation of reactive electrophiles and target molecules with a permanent DNA damage known as initiated or mutated cell. These were the steps of initiation. In the step of promotion, there is clonal proliferation of the altered cells and in progression stage, there is formation of a malignant tumor. The promotion stage involves the selective clonal expansion of initiated cells to produce a preneoplastic lesion. Exogenous and endogenous agents that function at this stage are called tumor promoters. These tumor promoters are not mutagenic or genotoxic. The example of promoters are hormones like estrogens, drugs like diethylstilbestrol and certain chemicals. Coming to metastasis. When the cancer spreads to other parts of the body, it is called metastasis. In this, the cancer cells break away from where they were originally or first formed and travel to the blood or the lymphatic system and form new tumor in other parts of the body. Metastasis is a multi-step process encompassing local infiltration of tumor cells into the adjacent tissue, then trans-endothelial migration of cancer cells into vessels, also known as intravasation. Then the survival in the circulatory system, extravasation and subsequent proliferation in other organs. This I have shown in the diagram. As you can see, the primary tumor initially invades locally and then through intravasation, they go into the circulation and survive in the circulation and through extravasation, they get organized in a distant site and there is formation of a micros metastasis when there is colonization there is then formation of macroscopic metastasis the roots of metastasis there are three primary ways tumors can spread to distant organs through the circulatory or the blood system or known as hematogenous spread through the lymphatic system through the body wall into the abdominal and chest cavities which is also known as the trans Coelomic metastasis root. The most common sites for cancer to metastasize include lungs, liver, bones and brain. Other places include the adrenal gland, the lymph nodes, skin and other organs. Biological carcinogenesis. Viral carcinogenesis is a type of biological carcinogenesis which refers to the process of transformation of normal cells into the cancerous cells which is induced by a virus. Oncogenic DNA viruses include Epstein Barr virus, Hepatitis B virus, human papilloma virus, human herpes virus 8, and Merkel cell polyoma virus. Oncogenic RNA viruses include Hepatitis C virus and human T cell lymphotropic virus 1. The mechanism of viral carcinogenesis The oncogenic virus integrates into the host genome and expresses their viral oncogenic proteins, which disrupts the cellular pathways in order to sustain their life cycle. Epstein-Barr virus, which has double-stranded DNA, it remains episomally and encodes for LMP1 transforming protein. Human herpes virus 8 has double-stranded DNA, which remains as an episome and expresses VGPCR and K1 proteins, among others, which have been shown to have transforming properties. HTLV-1 or human T-cell leukemia virus type 1 has single-stranded RNA which is reverse transcribed into double-stranded DNA and then it integrates into the host genome and encodes for a transacting factor tax which is considered to be a transforming protein. Human papilloma virus has double-stranded DNA. It may remain episomally but only from integrated genome as expressed E6 and E7 transforming proteins. Hepatitis B virus has double-stranded DNA and its carcinogenic effects are mainly through chronic inflammation. Hepatitis C virus has single-stranded RNA and its carcinogenic effect is also through chronic inflammation.
it does not integrate into the host genome. So as I have told, I have also depicted in this image that H that EBV virus or Epstein Barr virus uh, has the transforming LMP1. HHV8 virus has VGPC or NK17. The HDLV1 has DAX, HPV for E6 and E7, and HPV and HCV or hepatitis B and hepatitis C virus basically through chronic infl uh, inflammation causes uh, the formation of a cancer. Coming to differences between benign tumors and malignant tumors. Well, this remains a very important question. How to differentiate between a benign and a malignant tumor? So, I have enumerated certain points which are important in differentiating these two. For example, benign tumor is always a slow-growing mass. However, malignant tumors grow rapidly. The benign tumor will often have a regular surface, may have a capsule and is not attached to the deeper structures. However, the malignant tumors have irregular surfaces, non-capsulated and attached to deep structures. The benign tumors are non-invasive. However, malignant tumors are invasive to other organs. The benign tumors do not metastatize, but the malignant tumors do metastatize. Generally, the benign tumors are well differentiated. But the benign tumors don't recur after surgery. Malignant tumors can recur after surgery. Generally, to describe a benign tumor, suffix like OMA is added. For example, lipoma is a benign tumor. And to describe malignant tumor, suffix like sarcoma or carcinoma is added. For example, osteosarcoma or basal cell carcinoma are malignant tumors. The benign tumors can produce slight pressure effect on the neighboring organs, but malignant tumors generally do produce remarkable pressure effect on the neighboring tissues. So these are few points which can help us differentiate between the benign and the malignant tumors. So in this video, I have explained about all aspects of neoplasia. Neoplasia is a very important topic for exams. Chemical carcinogenesis, viral oncogenesis are very favorite questions of the examiners. So do go in detail about neoplasia in this video and I hope that it will help you all for your exams. Thank you and see you in the next video.